I guess at this moment in time that if you have nothing, meaning nothing to actually run on or any actual policies to tout, I guess the plan is to literally bully people into voting for you. Own lawyer said he could kill his political opponents using SEAL Team 6 and could not be prosecuted for it. Could not be prosecuted while he was in the White House. I could go down all of those lists, but they're, they're looking at an interview where Kamala Harris gives the answer. They just say, oh, but she told her life story at the beginning of that. It's not too much to ask Kamala, say, are you for a Palestinian state if Hamas is going to run that state? OK. Yes or no. And let's say you don't like her answer. Are you going to vote for Donald Trump? No, I'm not. Kamala I just Harris said I'm not going to vote for her. is not running for perfect. She's running against Trump. We have two choices. And so there are some things you might not know her answer to. And in 2024, unlike 2016 for a lot of the American people, we know exactly what Trump will do, who he is, and the kind of threat he is to democracy. I I'll talk about the crowd reaction there or the multiple crowd reactions. I'll talk about that a little bit later on this video, but let me just go ahead and say this right here. It looks to me like that you have to vote for her sort of shtick. It doesn't seem to me that it's breaking through to every single lib, which of course is what we're going to be talking about in this video. So make sure you guys stick around for the full bit. Or at least that was the, I guess you could say that was the whole purpose of that little bit that you guys saw from Bill Maher or his show, which of course I didn't really actually include him in it, but don't worry, we'll talk about it a little bit later over the course of this video. So this right here to me, I think is kind of hilarious to see. You've got a bit of a never Trump uh, civil war going on. Yes, I said civil war, but between never Trumpers and of course this also includes neo libs. However, there was also this very interesting exchange that occurred on Fox News where one of Kamala Harris's surrogates came out, did an interview with Sandra Smith, or you could say a segment with Sandra Smith, and of course, this right here would happen. Harris's plan. We're waiting. Yeah, okay, there's, it, there's, there's a lot of aspects to it in, in regards to looking at it online. So let's talk about lowering the grocery costs because that's something that's brought brought up. You, the viewers can look at this online. She talks about certain things in regards to advancing the first federal um, ban on price gouging on food and groceries to set clear rules to the road to make it clear that big corporations can't unfairly exploit consumers as well. Is that and happening? Secure new Is that happening? Could it not at this moment? No, this is her plan that's laid out for the first hundred days when she becomes president but of the price, United States of America. Gouging, is that currently happening? In regards to the, I don't know exactly if that's currently happening or not because I'm not privy to that type of information. Okay. But there are people are costing um, costing a lot of money. Yeah, you don't have any policies. And of course, this right here is the reason why it is that I opened up this video basically saying, I guess the plan is to bully your supporters uh, into voting for her or bullying your side into voting for her, which is not exactly an effective strategy. But then again, though, if that right there is the plan, of course, it's worked before for them. I don't think it's going to work as much this time around because Orange Man Bad does not seem to be the most effective strategy this time around. And we did say before that it would not be the most effective strategy uh uh, going forward. However, this little civil war between the Never Trumpers triggered a massive meltdown on MSNBC from Joe Scarborough that we're going to get to here in a second. You guys saw a small bit of it earlier, but of course, we also got to talk about this segment with Brett Stevens because I think this right here is kind of sort of what the Never Trumper is going through. And what I mean by Never Trumper is I mean the person who may, who claims that they are Republican, may say that they might vote for Harris out of spite. By the way, I want to say this really quick. If you see Twitter pages out there who say that uh, I'm a conservative, but I'm voting for Kamala Harris, I want you to know something right now. Those people are not conservatives. The vast majority of these people were discovered to be bots that were probably bought and paid off by other organizations. Some of these people were connected to the Lincoln Project, which, by the way, We'll talk about in the next video because uh, you guys know me. I love to do one of my videos for tomorrow, the night before, and the next one after. Just waiting on a little bit more before I decide to put that out. But let's just go ahead and say that, uh, yeah, uh, some of these people can be very, very easily bought off. And to go on top of this, chances are they were probably never conservative to begin with. And their whole goal 
was to try to disrupt MAGA as a whole. That right there is what their entire purpose was. It's not been working. Looking at the polling information and looking at the internal polls for Kamala Harris, obviously this venture has turned out to be a waste of time. However, that right there does not mean that we should not talk about this because obviously these people do in fact exist and these people oftentimes come with them or they take with them a lot of very negative emotions. I have no idea what it was about the orange man that triggered these people so bad, but once again, here we are. Now, before we get into that, make sure you guys go ahead and cut the notifications on for the channel. Make sure you guys also hit the like button. Make sure you guys also subscribe if you guys are new here. Share the video and let us go ahead and get into it. So before we go back to Brett Stevens, I want you guys to see the very first part of this little meltdown from Joe Scarborough at MSNBC. Something's happening out there where, where people are trying to flatten. And, and it's not just the anti-anti Trumpers. Uh, it's, it's also people in the mainstream media. They're going, yes, Donald Trump, he's saying all of these crazy things. But did you did you see that? And there were two. There are two people this weekend with significant columns going. But did you see her answer to the local Philadelphia question where she actually gave a three point answer? And she talked about, uh, you know, $50,000 for startup small businesses. She talked about tax breaks, uh, $25,000 tax breaks for first. Okay, so what is the meat of this discussion? Well, the meat of this discussion is the fact that Kamala Harris does not do a good job of explaining her policies. She does not do a very, very good job of telling people who the hell she is, even though just about everybody in the country right now has a relatively long memory, mostly due to the fact that she is the current vice president, meaning sitting vice president, meaning that everything that's going on right now in this country is connected to her. It's part of the reason why it is that people aren't really, how do I say, uh, too keen on voting for her. Also, something else, too, I need to remind people back in January, I said it was before she was basically become the presumptive nominee. Back in January, her uh, approval rating or her likability was at uh, 28%. Somehow or another, it got to 44%, and then it turned into 53%. Now it's right back down to below 40%. It's probably because of the debate, probably because of what I said about her facial expressions. It's probably the fact that her polling is obviously coming back down to earth, and a big part of that is overall turnout. It looks to me like she is not exactly raking in the numbers that she needs to get to get her over in some of these very, very key states. We may talk about that a little bit later on when we get closer to the election because, of course, the election is right around the corner. However, Joe Scarborough would eventually start aiming his uh, proverbial pistol, proverbial uh, fingers, against such personalities like Mr. Stevens, who we're going to go back to here in a second because I find this exchange, quite frankly, fascinating, especially given the crowd reaction of uh, Bill Maher's actual following, which I'm trying to decipher which one were the real claps and which one were not the real claps, but let's keep going. It's unclear to me how there could be an Sentiment. informed... The problem that a lot of people have with Kamala is we don't know her answer to anything, okay? But you know and his I think answer I, I, to everything. And, and that's why I would never vote for him and people shouldn't vote for him, but people also are expected to have some idea of what the program is of the person you're supposed to vote for. You're just not supposed to say, well, you have to vote for Y because X is this, that, and the other. Let's find out a little bit more. And I don't think it's a lot to ask her to sit down for a real interview as opposed to a puff piece in which she describes like her, her feelings of growing up in Oakland with nice lawns. Then I would just say to that, when you move to Nirvana, give me your real estate broker's number and I'll be your next door neighbor. We don't live there. Okay, now real quick, the negative reaction that she's having towards Brett is in regards to an article that he wrote. And this way will come back up a little bit later on in the video because I'm going to come back to it when we talk more about Joe Scarborough. But basically what happened was that Brett Stevens wrote an article basically detailing why it is that uh, people should not just blindly go vote for Harris if you're a never-Trumper because guess what? She hasn't exactly outlined any policies and for the most part she's just more of the same of what Joe Biden is and possibly a lot worse. Also, something else that needs to be said, I've never really and truly done a video on price freezes. I don't think I have to, but uh, this whole thing about ending gouging, price gouging, is just another way for her to try to say we're going to implement a price freeze, which uh, won't work. That's basically communism. It eliminates any incentive for businesses to actually do anything. And, of course, to go on top of that, it would also cause a supply and demand issue. Don't ask me how at this moment in time. Don't worry. We will probably do a video on that in the near future. But basically, the hoopla is over a Never Trumper saying, I'm not just going to blindly give my vote to Kamala Harris. But like I said, we'll get back to the article a little bit later on the video. Okay, guys, here's 
to me what's really and truly alarming. When she said something about basically, you know who Donald Trump is, he's told you who he is, you need to vote against him, the crowd just erupted and cheered. Now, I can't, I can't decipher whether these people are cheering the fact of whether it is that they're doing or they're following the propaganda, almost like 1984. It's almost like people screaming at the TV. And then you have another part of the crowd that cheers Mr. Stevens because Mr. Stevens, of course, is basically saying, look, we don't know who the hell Kamala Harris is, nor do we know what her policies are. So therefore, why should we uh, give our vote to her? It's kind of confusing to me. Won't you guys please leave a comment in the comment section? I would love to get you guys thoughts on that. But the fact of the matter is this right here. If anything, what should be going on here is that people should actually be cheering Brett a little bit more because Brett's actually asking some questions. Now, why it is that he's obviously staying home, not voting for Trump, therefore you might think he's kind of silently supporting Harris by not doing that. It's basically saying, uh, I would prefer her to win, but I'm not actually going to vote for her. In a lot of ways, that actually works out more to Trump's favor. I'll explain that why towards the end, because the thing about me is this right here. Left-leading voters are those who won't vote for Trump. I prefer you just simply stay home if you're too keen on Harris, because guess what? You could make a decision that could continue to doom us all. But the fact of the matter is this right here. To me, it's kind of alarming that the crowd at Bill Maher's on Bill Maher's show uh, is blindly just simply going along with whatever the media tells these people to do. And of course, Bill himself would eventually chime in. I mean, you're, I feel like you're, you're the dog we're trying to get in the car to go to the vet. You know? <laughs> Your head for the rest of the day. I say that as one of your biggest fans, you know. I mean, I gobble up everything you write. I just don't understand how you, you get to this place. But okay, let's let's not badger. Um, but do you know, for the last two weeks, I've been going on and on. Like, I can't figure out where undecided voters, where informed undecided voters are. I'm like. Now, gang, I don't think I need to go through everything Bill has said. I don't think I need to go through the fact that I don't believe he's getting red-pilled at all. He's obviously gotten back in election mode, and obviously he's going to be sipping for Harris at this moment in time, even though at one point in time he felt that she could not win. Of course, he's changed his mind, obviously, for the crowd. I don't think he'll, I don't think what he thinks will come true, but still at the same time, though, it just seems to me like more and more and more, I got to come out here and prove to people that Bill Maher was never really and truly on your side. Yeah, he's a classical liberal, but at the end of the day, though, and even though he's obviously fought back against the wokes, at the end of the day, I just kicked my camera. At the end of the day, Bill Maher will do what the Democratic Party tells him to do. He'll go out there and support the Democrat nominee. He'll go out there and push for those causes. Like I said before, for the most part, Bill is just simply coping with the environment that he's helped create for so long because, of course, he's been pushing the left liberal line almost every day his entire life, or at least every day since he's been in comedy or wherever it was he got to start from. But still, though, that does prompt this conversation going back, or it does lead to the conversation going back to Joe Scarborough, because, yeah, Joe Scarborough is not too happy that the propaganda isn't breaking through to everybody who's a quote-unquote never dropper. And yet, two people, one at the Wall Street Journal, one at the New York Times, were like, did you hear her talking about her background and her middle class? And then they go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She got to the policy questions later, but she never tells us anything about anything. Actually, that's just a lie. It's an absolute lie. And it also ignores what politicians have been doing for hundreds of years. Yeah. When somebody asked me about jobs, I always started talking about my father at 40 years old, losing his job, being laid off at Lockheed. I talked about driving around the South, my entire family when I was seven or eight, sitting in the back seat. my dad going to town, to town, to town, trying to find a job so he could support the family. And I kept going through that. And then I would end by saying, and that's why the greatest social policy is a job. Or, Joe, it could be the fact that people have already decided that they do not like her. I mean, people have been researching her since the Brett Kavanaugh moment, okay? People have been researching her ever since then, and she looked horrible then, and then she looked horrible on the campaign stage. Look, this is the same woman who has said that she wanted to ban fracking and then turned right back around and said that she... Look, nobody trusts the flip-flopper. I don't think I need to go through every single flip-flop, and not to mention the fact that she didn't even have a policy page until literally the day before the debate with Donald Trump, and she actually copied 
a great big giant portion of that from Joe Biden's website. Do you think maybe that right there could be what the hell's going on? Is that maybe people already did their research on her and they don't exactly like what they're seeing? Just saying. For actually talking about their background and how it influences their policy. But now, as we get in the home stretch, the anti anti Trumpers who just can't admit they are going to vote for a man who tried to overthrow American democracy, who did what they did on January 6th. They're desperately trying to create the permission structure so they can vote for a man who said he was going to terminate the Constitution, that his, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs should be executed, that he told his staff members that Mike Pence deserved to be hanged. I could go down the list. I could do it for hours. Who's law? I don't know, man. I mean, didn't Trump just like survive like another assassination attempt? I, I, I mean, it sounds to me like uh, you guys are the ones who are the violent ones. Two main things that need to be said or talked about. Number one, you can tell what Joe Scarborough is doing. When he talks about a job being uh, the, the right social program, that right there is something that used to be ran out there during the Reagan years. And he's actually correct about it. I mean, Joe Scarborough claims to be a former Republican, and he was at one time a former Republican. However, he's not a Republican today. I think that these people who are like Republicans against Trump, never Trumpers, especially people like the Lincoln Project, you need to just simply drop the label and just go ahead and go join the Democratic Party because guess what? You are no longer a Republican in the Donald Trump version of the party. You're probably never a conservative. You probably never were one to begin with. The Lincoln Project people, by the way, hold themselves loyal to John McCain. And while it is that I'll never attack John McCain's military record, I will go after his record in the United States Senate. He was one of the worst senators that we had. And to go on top of that, he only kept his job down there in Arizona due to some uh, shady stuff. I advise you guys go check out Razor Fist videos on that. As a matter of fact, I may even do a video myself on that. It'll probably be a two-parter. Talk about his military career in one and then talk about his Senate career in the other. Trust me, they will be night and day. The fact of the matter is this right here. Joe Scarborough is not a Republican, so I have no idea why the hell he's even bringing up that the best, uh, the best social program out there is a job. I have no idea why he keeps on with that shtick. But then again, at the same time, though, you've also got people like Michael Steele who claim to be Reagan-esque Republicans and uh, against Donald Trump. Yet the only thing Michael Steele has done since he's been at MSNBC ever since 2010 is just simply bend over and take it from either Chris Matthews or whoever the hell is on that night that he's having a discussion with, which, by the way, they aren't even really discussions. They're just struggle sessions for Michael Steele. And once again, getting upset because people are questioning who Kamala Harris is. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe what you should do is put a better candidate out there. Maybe that right there is what you should do. Also, to go on top of that, when you yell at the TV, you yell at the screen, and you try to order people to vote, and I understand it's MSNBC, a very, very left-leaning uh, network, uh, this type of stuff does not work. Uh, when you're ordering people to go vote, or you're telling them that they should go vote, or they should vote for this person blindly, the only thing that they're going to do is just simply entrench themselves much, much further. So go ahead and keep up the rhetoric. We'll reap the rewards as a result of this. But we do have one more part to discuss. At the beginning of that Philadelphia interview, like no, no, no politician has ever done. Does Ronald Reagan, did Ronald Reagan do that? Did Barack Obama? Yeah, damn straight they did. Did Bill Clinton tell stories? Yeah, damn straight they did. This is absolutely insane. The false equivalency you see it from Brad Stevens, you see, you see it in the Wall Street Journal, you mm -hmm. see it in the New York Times. It's insane the false equivalencies they are desperately pushing at the end of this campaign. Just orange man, bad crap like always. And of course, these people accusing you of that which they are already guilty of. I mean, like I said before, the man did in fact survive two assassination attempts. And I think right now the American people are saying, you know what, maybe the left should not be in charge in this country, but let's get back on track. When he's talking about telling stories that presidents do, like telling stories. And by the way, we have to keep hearing the whole orange man bad chick. I don't think I need to entertain all that because we've kind of sort of gotten numb to that because that's all these networks really and truly do. But then again, at the same time, though, they need Trump to kind of fuel their ratings. I'm just simply saying, all right? But still, though, the fact of the matter is this right here. Uh, this guy is obviously unhinged. This guy is obviously going crazy. It could be somewhat performative. But he's pissed off because people, quite frankly, don't know who the hell the current vice president of the United States is. They don't know who the hell uh, Kamala Harris is. Or maybe it could be the fact that uh, maybe most of them do, in fact, know her. Maybe most of them did do some research on her. And uh, most of them don't like what the hell is in her background. I mean, 
This right here is the same woman who got on the debate stage and said that she was a gun owner, yet she'd also at the same time, uh, let's just say she had said that she wanted a mandatory buyback. Then she turned right back right and said she wanted AR-15s banned. Of course, they call them assault weapons. And of course, they'll sit there and tell you that it stands for assault rifle when obviously it does not. It stands for Armalite Model 15. Uh, yeah, if you do all the fact checking on her, then you obviously will in fact find out that she's the one who's full of crap. It's the same person, by the way, who was against fracking and now all of a sudden she's okay with fracking. You see, nobody trusts her. Also, go take a look at a prosecutorial record as District Attorney of San Francisco. It's abhorrent. Locking up mothers for their kids in a missing school. I mean, come on, man. You can't control what the hell your kid does once you drop them off at the front door, at the front gate. Next thing you know, when you drive off, your child is taken off and uh, decided to go get in trouble somewhere else. Also, the marijuana violations where she overcharged people to try to lock them up and use people for cheap labor beyond their prison sentences, stuff like that there. All that type of stuff that I've talked about on this channel. Fact of the matter is, it could be one or two things. Either Kamala Harris has not introduced herself properly to people and people want to know more about her before giving them their vote and potentially ruining the country. Or maybe a lot of people have looked at her and said, you know what, screw this, I'm not going to vote for her because she's god awful. So what happens here? Well, more likely, or more than likely, what would actually happen in this case is that people like, say, Brett Stevens would probably stay home. And I didn't, I didn't say this before, if you try to bully him into going to go vote for Kamala Harris, what will probably just happen is that he'll just write in somebody else to vote third party therefore hurting the Democrat a lot more than the Republican. The fact of the matter is this right here. If you're a never-Trumper and you're not sure about voting for Kamala Harris and you don't want to vote for her, uh, then do us all a favor and stay home. Trust me, it would be better off if you stayed home because your decision to go put her in office knowing that she's this god-awful, this daggone bad, and of course you can try to use the whole he's a threat to democracy shtick, but you guys will see here in the next couple of videos that that's obviously not working because People, quite frankly, at this moment in time, don't care. The most thing Donald Trump's probably going to do for you is give you a tax cut and improve the economy and improve the U.S. foreign policy situation. But still, though, the point is this right here. If you're a never-Trumper and you don't want to vote for Kamala Harris, good. Stay home. Don't screw it up for everybody else. But uh, you guys, please tell me what you think in the comment section. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sound off in the comments. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and record video number two and get it out for tomorrow. The videos that are coming out tomorrow will probably be a little bit shorter. And of course, the videos on Wednesday, at least one of them, will probably be a little bit bigger. We got to talk about feminized men. So we're going to be dedicating Wednesday to that there. Still, though, please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comments, and I'll see you guys later.